Zootopia is hardly the first kids movie to appeal to adults, but what stands out about Zootopia is that it tackles adult topics that family films usually avoid. Racism, sexism, bigotry, and drugs. Crazy world are you living in where you think a bunny could be a cough? Of course, none of these terms is ever expressly named. The movie uses metaphor and analogy so that kids can grasp the underlying points, while adults also might learn a fresh approach to controversial issues. And you'd never call Zootopia gritty, heavy, or moralizing because it pulls all this off while still feeling light, entertaining, and heartfelt. Even before the film's release, Zootopia was already making strides to draw in a more mature crowd. Many of their promotional pieces were parodies of film posters for R-rated films, such as The Big Short, The Revenant, and Mad Max Fury Road. On the primary level, Zootopia is an allegory about prejudice. The next time you think you will ever be anything more than just a stupid carrot farming dumb bunny. <laughs> the way that the Zootopia Animal Society is structured mirrors our real-world racial tensions. The city is made up of 90% prey and 10% predator. Vicious predator or meat prey. Even though the prey is the vast majority and thus protected by social institutions, the minority, the predators, are made out to be feared. Authorities in power who are part of the majority vilify the predators, highlighting their physical strength and different looks. There's also a clear segregation that takes place, as animals are separated by species and businesses turn away certain kinds. We reserve the right to refuse service to anyone. Very first rabbit officer, Judy oh, Hopp. M. goodness. They really did hire a bunny. Then, there's the discrimination in Judy Hopp's workplace. As a bunny surrounded by physically larger animals, Judy represents the female in a male-dominated workplace. Talking, Judy. I was top of my class at the academy. Well, then writing 100 tickets a day should be easy. When she's first forced to work parking duty, this speaks to how women historically have been stuck in secretarial or administrative jobs with the excuse that they're unfit for more leadership roles. I don't want to be a meter maid. I want to be a real cop. Judy's co-workers equate her smaller size with an inability to do the job because the job is designed for animals who fit the big animal or male profile. But like other smart women facing sexism, Judy uses her smarts to outwit, work around, and find different means to excel. I gotta tell you, you are even cuter than I thought you'd be. A bunny can call another bunny cute, but when other animals do it... You're a cute meter maid, though. It's not exactly a place for a cute little bunny. Don't call me cute. Get in the car. She objects to being called cute, challenging her co-workers and even us watching, because naturally, we've never thought twice about Go calling bunnies home cute. With that cute, fuzzy, wuzzy little tail. It seems absurd that this would be offensive. You're not seriously looking for a new assistant, are you? But as we react to that absurdity, we're implicitly encouraged to apply the same questioning to how we talk about women. While sure, it might be a nice compliment for some to tell a woman she's cute or pretty, in a working context, this talk elevates her appearance over her merits and minimizes her status as a serious professional. Zootopia also casts a spotlight on the dangers of media fear-mongering. When Judy holds a press conference, she's surrounded by horrifying imagery of predators in mid-growl, shrouded in black and white. The way the predators are portrayed in the media masks that as a much outnumbered minority, the predators are actually a disadvantaged group. The reporters' questions seem intentionally leading, meant to instigate fear and alienate predators solely for the sake of pushing headlines. Have any other foxes gone savage? More bad news in this city gripped by fear. The media's tendency to sensationalize and play upon the public's fear is an ever-present reality. This problem is exceptionally relevant in today's media climate with its polarized news sources and plethora of fake news feeding divisive political agendas. Even though Judy is one of the prey and experiences discrimination, She's not without fault. It may have something to do with biology. What do you mean by that? Her remark, while not intending to perpetuate problematic stereotypes, alludes to highly racially charged, offensive discussions of genetics from our world and history. Afterwards, Judy is confronted by her partner Nick, the fox, who's a predator. Nick, stop it. You're not like them. Oh, there's a them now. This event leads to a series of scenes showing microaggressions. A mother on the train pulling her child away from the predator. Judy carrying around fox repellent. What can you tell us about the animals that went savage? Falling by a savage polar bear. And repetitions of the word savage, savage, which can be associated so with critiques of the media's usage the... of words like thug. 
Judy's mistake and its consequences is one of the movie's most explicit lessons to the audience. Even if we don't consider ourselves guilty of prejudice, microaggressions and even word choice can be gateways to treating people as others or less than. They thought it would be better if a predator such as myself wasn't the first face that you see when you walk into the ZPD. So we should examine even our small and unconscious actions. As Judy discovers that Bellwether orchestrated the predator attacks to fearmonger and seize power, the movie points out government's officials' ability to use fear to coerce and manipulate voters. Get them. Prey fears predator and you stay in power? Fear always works. This is a relevant parallel to the rise of populism all over the globe today. And it's unusual for a kid's film to raise the prospect that authorities might not be trustworthy, honest, or well-intentioned. I was trying to protect the city! You were just trying to protect your job. Hey, no kiss bye-bye for daddy? You kiss me tomorrow, I'll bite your face off. And let's not forget other inside jokes that make the movie fun for adults. Oh, hi! I'm Judy, your new neighbor. Yeah, well, we're loud. Don't expect us to apologize for it. We see an array of pirated DVDs that pun on Disney and Pixar movie titles. The mask the scientist uses to make the night howler drugs in an abandoned train car visually recalls the mask and environment we associate with the process of cooking meth. The movie also contains references to The Godfather, which most kids won't have seen. You come here unannounced on the day my daughter is to be married. And the visit to the DMV mines comedy from its reputation for being unreasonably slow. They're all slow? A problem kids are unlikely to have experienced. D. Mm hmm. Zero three. When kids emerge from Zootopia, they won't be using any of this advanced language to discuss race, drugs, gender, or the DMV. But it raises an interesting discussion about how we can talk to kids about issues like inequality. So yeah, Zootopia is a fun ride that makes us smile, while also encourages us, adults and kids, to think a little deeper. Juliet's can do anything like a boy can do. Zootopian isn't just for kids. That's a wrap.